What is up, everyone? I know a lot of you have been like, where are you? Where have you been? I haven't even been doing stories or anything. I know I've left you guys hanging a little bit. Um, it's not because I'm like struggling so hard. I know some of you are so sweet. I've been getting messages like, I hope you're okay based off your last post and you kind of went MIA. I'm okay. I'm more than okay. Um, I've just honestly... Here's what's been up. Um, my I'm past my book deadline. They have been, my publisher has been so sweet to give me an extension, but I had COVID um, last week. So did my son. So me, all of my kids. I've been homeschooling all week. I'm trying to finish my book. I got like eight new clients all at once, and it's been a little crazy. So. I have just been like head down trying to crank out work as much as possible and be present with my kids. So that's where I've been. What's up, Andrea? Thank you, girl. Um, so, um, all right, you ready? You ready to know where this freaking crazy emotional journey has taken me? So let me give you some context of where I've been. Um, some people have been like, oh, don't worry. Like you'll bounce back. And I'm like, I don't. I'm not worried and I don't want to bounce. <laughs> um, so let me, let me, let me explain. Okay. So let me first say this isn't my first rodeo getting like uber fit with this bikini competition, right? I've been fit been very fit for a long time. And it's a very interesting, um, position in society. I guess it would say to be a very fit person. One thing that really pissed me off, honestly, when I first got fit was how much respect admiration. Uh, it was just felt like everybody wanted to be my friend. Everybody cared what I had to say. All of a sudden I was like a more important person in society because I was really fit and it made me mad. It would make me mad when guys with wedding rings would check me out, piss me off. <laughs> like, I just was like, what is this? You know? So from a society standpoint, we're like more valuable, the fitter, the more fit we are. And Going into the depths of this bikini competition, oh man, I mean, I don't even think I can begin to describe it all on this live, but the first thing, the first thing is I want to be clear that, um, I did the bikini competition as an experiment because I have coached so many, I think most of you know this, but because I have coached so many people coming out of it that are not in a good way, they're not. They're freaking addicted to it and they don't feel good about themselves unless they look like that. And they, uh, many people, guys, you have, you have to know, like, not only do I work with people one-on-one, -on -one, but I get messages from people constantly talking about how these things have destroyed their lives, taken over their lives and how they'll never be happy with their bodies again, unless they look like that again. And guess what that experience is like? You want to know if you've never been 10% body fat or whatever, I'll tell you what that experience is like it takes over your life completely. Nothing else matters as much as that. Nothing, nothing, not your friends, not your family, not your happiness, nothing matters more than that. So that's what that experience is like. It is uber focused. This is the thing that matters most in my life and everything else can just peace out. So being in that place, you know, I see so many people who are in that place for years and I, and after going through the, the depth of that experience, I look, I've been, so what I did was I followed all these people that were competitors while I was competing for inspo. And so now my explore page and my freaking feed were like full of all this. And after going through it and I'm like, this ain't it, this is not it. This is not health. I don't even consider this fitness. I don't know what this is, but it is not healthy at all. And none of these people are happy. I'm sorry. People are going to freaking hate me for this, but <laughs> I'm just like the energy, like when I think of health, I think of like, like imagine we lived in some utopian society or something. We like lived out in nature and we were all happy and full of love and like enriched and had great relationships and ate healthy food and had wonderful connections. And then look at like bodybuilding accounts and like the energy coming from those people that is not happiness. That is not health and happiness is part of health. That is who, the, the people that I look up to. What am I looking for? I am always looking under the surface. I'm like, I don't care about your six pack abs or how big your smile is in that picture. What is the energy that I am feeling? And when I see someone who is a health professional, who is happy, deeply happy, like they love people, their ego is turned down a little bit and they care and they're kind. I'm like, you're freaking healthy. 
and their, their body's healthy, their skin's healthy, their soul is healthy, that's health. And this chronic not enoughness, this like never ever good enough thing, that's not health. <laughs> and yet, because it looks super uber fit, we everyone chases it. And we're obsessed with this as a society. And I'm telling you, it ain't it. And I, I know the insides, guys. I know the dark side. I know how people, they give up. They, they don't spend time with their children so they can go back to the gym another time. Right? I was doing that during the prep. Before the prep, Jerem, my 13-year-old, want to go to the gym with me? Yeah, let's go, Jerem. But during the prep, mm, he's going to slow me down. I, like, really have to get a fast pace on my uphill walk. Like, oh, I'll, you stay here. Right? So it drives you into this very, very selfish place. And on top of it, when your health goals are purely aesthetic, how will you ever, what's the end goal? How will you ever be enough? There's always going to be somebody more fit than you, you know? And I look at these people who are like at the Olympia level and I'm like, for what? Why? You know? And, and like the second show that I did was awesome because there was a pro show there. So I really got to look, okay, here's the, here's the next level of this thing. These are the professionals. There was a guy there that flew in from Egypt. He didn't even place in the top, like he didn't even get first call outs. He had his whole little team fall out. You can see the look of like stress in his eyes and he didn't like nothing, nothing. His whole life is centered around this. And what is it actually bringing? And so how do we translate this over to like everyday regular people? This is, this is the process that I, that I went through. Yeah, I'll save this live. I will, I will post this as a IGTV after we finish, but I just started like all I wanted during that process. I was like, I just want to like be with my kids and like not have to like have so much of my focus in life be about my freaking body. Holy crap. Like I like fitness. I like going to the gym. I like feeling good. I love my adrenaline rush. I love the dopamine. I love all those things. I love lifting weights. I love pushing limits. I love eating healthy. I like that. I just don't like it to the point that I can't even enjoy my life because it, I'm obsessed. It is like eating disorder, exercise bulimia, whatever you want to call it in a box. That whole, that, that, that was my experience of it. And because of that, my process was this, like, because I normally look pretty close to a competitor, <laughs> I look pretty close, right? I was like, I don't even want to look like this anymore. <laughs> I don't want to look like I support these kind of behaviors. I don't want to put this kind of pressure on people. I don't want to contribute to some woman seeing a picture of me and then developing some psychotic obsession with her calories and macros and never enjoying her life or being with her family because she's so obsessed with her weight. So it truly put me in this place of like, yeah, bring it on. I don't want cut shoulders. I don't want striations. I don't want any of that. I don't want it. If I don't want to feed that freaking dragon, <laughs> that's where I was at. And I was truly like good with it. I was like, yeah, bring it on. And I'll be honest, even if my weight up, like I still don't, it doesn't bother me. Like I, so I'll tell you where I've, I've come. Um, my meditations, I'm so grateful for my, for meditating. Cause to me, meditation is a, um, it's a portal, I guess, to my spirit guidance that I get. Intuition, higher self, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I was in this place and I got this meditation. It was actually the morning that I posted that post that probably a lot of you saw. And um, if anyone's ever done plant medicines, you've experienced um, a teaching. There's like a teacher that comes in. It's just like, it's like a really good mom or grandma that's just teaching you. And this is what happened in my meditation. It was a really deep one. And I was kind of like led on a guided meditation <laughs> um, by whatever this voice guidance that I get was. And it was like, Tara, I want you to pretend that no one else exists in the whole world. You're the only human on this big old planet. It's just you. Feel yourself. Feel your body. And... I mean, I guess, you know, if you want, try it yourself right now, close your eyes and like imagine your energy, 
your body? How do you feel? How do you want to feel from the inside out? Not about what you look like in a freaking picture, but how do you want to feel? And I was led into all these different like visions of myself. I, I saw myself, I first saw myself climbing up a mountain and I was scrambling up it and I was like, <laughs> like a freaking dog with my tongue out. I'm like, oh, this is so fun, you know? And then I saw myself like jumping from boulder to boulder and being fast and quick. I like being fast. That is a very, very fun feeling <laughs> for me. So I, I saw that and I saw myself on a beach just running across it, just totally comfortable in my body. Um, I saw myself like out on a desert road, like running just to push myself just for freaking fun, you know, all by myself. And I realized that for me, a priority in my life is to feel free and to have fun. Those are my top two values in life, freedom and fun. And I was so grateful that this meditation led me back into this place because I realized that as long as I feel that in my body, as long as I feel free and as long as my body isn't holding me back from having fun, I'm good. I could give two shits what my body looks like if my shoulder caps are defined enough or if my glute development is good and my hamstring tie in. I don't, who gives a shit about that? <laughs> Why does that matter? What, what I have learned in working with people and getting into the deeper levels is I'm like, if there's one commonality amongst everyone's goals, no matter what their goals are, they have those goals because they perceive that, that go those goals will bring them happiness. That is what everyone wants. The, at the end of the day, whatever you're working towards, whatever you're doing, whatever you're choosing in your life is because you want to be happy. And I'm telling you, starving yourself to damn death and psychotically obsessing over every little part of your body is not happiness. So what did I do? I was like, what do you freaking love, Tara? I was like, I freaking love running. Guys, I've been running since I was a little girl. My mom used to bring me to the track. My mom was a national all track star and she would bring us to the track and we would run across that football field. We would do fart licks with her. We would play in the sand. That is a, that is joy to me. My mom used to take me to a park that was heavily wooded in Virginia. It was so beautiful and we would run and that's where she taught me how to run. She taught me how to breathe. She, she taught me so many lessons in running that have become lessons in life. When things get intense, when intensity goes up, the basics go up. You watch your form, you breathe, all of that stuff brings me so much joy going out and, and going to a new city. I always make a point to be able to run on foot and explore it. That is so freaking fun. That is adventure. So as long as I can do that, as long as I'm not limited by my body and I'm loving it, that is health to me. You know, it's about how we feel, not about how we look, you know? Um, there's one other story I wanted to share with you guys. It was very impacting for me. I was on Mount Olympus here in Utah. Okay, before I start that story, do I think social media makes it worse? Great question, because as I went back on my Instagram, <laughs> and I had all those like bodybuilding accounts, competing accounts, I literally like could not, it made me sick to my stomach. Cause I was like, these people are trapped. These people are not happy. And it's feeding this machine in which like probably happy people <laughs> are seeing that and then comparing themselves. My friend Kate, uh, Kate on shame, you guys should follow her. She's on here. She was telling me a phrase that she's learned. It's called like compare and despair. Oh, right. So women are comparing themselves to this. I can't even stomach it. I, I literally like I paid 50 bucks or whatever extra for the video of me competing. I don't even want to watch it. I just like, I just don't want to see myself doing that. I, it's so opposed to inside out health to me. <laughs> the people I've worked with, I've, I've done their blood work after competing. It's not good. And you, and the, the even darker side is almost all of these people are on illegal steroids. And then those drift into other drug addictions, anything to app, to suppress appetite, right? So whatever it takes to just freaking be skinny and lean. I saw a guy that he won one of the things at the show and he, I, I saw him on like my Facebook stories. It like popped up at the top and he was so shredded. And I was just like, it's just crazy how my mindset has changed. I'm like, why would you want to look like that? Why would you do that to your body? You know? Why? That is the question. Why? Why? You know? 
And so finally, like, I was like, okay, me getting like really like big, <laughs> what is the why behind that? Oh, so to not make other people feel bad about that's not that's not inside out health either. It's what do you want, Tara? How do you feel? Where do you feel good? That is all that freaking matters. It is an addiction. Absolutely an addiction. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so yeah, so, um, real quick, I'll tell the story. I do want to tell the story on Mount Olympus, but I will say like what, what I have come back to this month. <laughs> it's so fun. I running and, and, and lifting in a way that I freaking love. Right. So I made my little training schedule. I got my goals at the end of this month. I'm going to run a, or when is it? No, June 15th. June 15th, somewhere around there. I got it written down at home. I'm going to run a 10 miler for time just because, because that's freaking fun for me. I love it. Right. And lifting. There's been so many times that I, sorry guys, my kids are calling me that I hope that doesn't happen like 10 times in a row. There's been so many times that I've been like, great. <laughs> Do you, if anybody has kids, you like decline it and they're like, Oh, what happened? And they call you like 10 times. Um, so there have been so many times that I like didn't even like lift to my full capacity because I was like, well, I don't want to get like too muscular and be like one of those like crazy muscle women. I'm like, screw that. I don't care. I'm doing what I freaking want to. I like lifting and I'm going to lift for fun and I'm going to push my limits and I'm going to run. And if I don't want to, I'm not gonna, if I want to take a day off and just go play at the park with my kids, I'm gonna, that's freedom <laughs> inside out. What's coming from you? How do you feel? Okay. Last story I wanted to share this, this experience heavily impacted me. I was on Mount Olympus. I was hiking by myself and I could hear off in the distance. I could hear somebody like really having a hard time breathing. And as I came around the bend, I saw this woman who was pretty overweight and she was with, I don't know who she was with some guy who was like, he was actually really fit and he was just sitting there and he was waiting for her and she had this walking stick and she was like dying, right? Like she was really struggling and he was like just patiently waiting for her. And I just look, I just, I just looked at her and I thought, Honestly, like, I was just like, that sucks, man. That sucks. That is so hard for her to get up this mountain because I was like hop, skipping, jumping, going along my merry way. And this came at actually a really great time in my life because at the time I was dating somebody who did not understand my love for fitness and he challenged me on it and he thought maybe, yeah, he was like, maybe you have like an unhealthy addiction to the gym. And I'm of course me being little miss, like growth mindset junkie. I wanted to see, I was like, maybe I do. Maybe. Okay. Let me, let me tap into that. Let me allow change. And so I did not lift for two months during that time period. I just did yoga and I got up all in the mountains and I just hiked and, and I loved it. It was, it was great. It was fun having more time to get in the mountains. Um, but what happened during that hike was I felt my intuition come in and it was like, good for you. Good for you for taking care of your body so that you can enjoy this experience without limits. Good for you. It's okay. You live in Utah. It's snowy most of the time. It's cold most of the year. There's not any other outlet for you to really be able to take care of your body in order to have freedom to enjoy all that life has to offer. And a body that is like, quite frankly, my body feels, no, it's not limitless, but it feels close to that. You know, like I'm not held back by my body. I can enjoy a hike and just freaking enjoy it. And take in the beauty without being like, Oh, this freaking sucks. When this going to be over, you know? So when I went back to the gym, I was like, Oh, I freaking love this. This is pretty fun. You know? And if you live here and you see me at the gym, <laughs> you see me, I'm throwing balls all over the place and battle roping and box jumping and slamming and just, yeah, it's freaking fun. You get your music on, get, get all those creative juices going. I have so many epiphanies. I love it. It brings me joy. Right. But you know, it doesn't bring me joy not enoughness. Oh, not good enough. Waist isn't small enough. Weight's not down enough. Glutes aren't developed enough. Shoulders aren't developed enough. You know, like this not enoughness that has become attached to health and fitness. It's, it's gotta go. And I don't want to stand by it anymore. So that's, that's been my process. There's more, I mean, there's so much coming. I will say I'm, I'm still in it. Like it's causing me to really deeply think about the messages that I'm sharing big time. So you may see some shifts in those. I can't tell you how many people have messaged me and have told me how their lives and their souls have been destroyed from competing in fitness competitions. 
and how they will never see themselves the same again. How they've gotten anything from like haven't been able to have kids because of the hormone problems to getting shingles afterwards to getting hypothyroidism. That's health. <laughs> Not, you know. So I guess my, my overall message here is it's like I say it all the time, but does it bring you joy? And are you kidding yourself? right? Are you, are you addicted to it? What is the, what is the deep underlying purpose in your fitness endeavors? Is it to be enough? Because if it is, you got some different work to do that comes from it. That happens outside of the gym. Okay. You don't, we don't earn love. (laughs) We don't earn enoughness from ourselves or anyone else. We give that to ourselves. We see that we are already worthy of that. Right, And when you know that, when you really know that and you're not bullshitting yourself, but then you go later and you're like, ee, 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 doing all that stuff. Because if you're doing all that stuff or you get on the scale and you feel not enough, you have deeper work to do that comes from outside of the gym. But when you really are like, dude, I care less. I don't care. I love my body. I am grateful for my body. Thank you, body. Let's go, body. Then all of your actions go up then your actions follow suit. And guess what? If you eat a freaking piece of cheesecake, you're like, that was freaking good. <laughs> Next. <laughs> All right. Because what this pressure that we're putting on ourselves collectively in society, you know, I looked it up. I looked up today, the statistics from research, 91%, and that's amongst people who admit it, 91% of women have body image issues, 91%. You know what I think it is? 99.9. <laughs> It's, it's come from so many years of image on media for people's monetary gain. And I don't want any part of it. I don't want any part of it. You know, I've had clients who are obese who have perfect blood work. And clients who are little go-go bunnies that look like fitness competitors that have horrible blood work. Becky, not only fitness comps, but other extreme diets. Freaking crazy what's out there. Yeah, man, I'm so tired of it. What do you think of the whatever diet? Like, no. It's uh, honestly, this whole thing, it, you guys know I'm writing a book right now about coming off of keto. It's made me very, very leery of even recommending keto unless it's like absolutely necessary. I can't see any better option for people because I'm tired of seeing restrictions. I'm tired of the restrictions. Now, if you're going to try to lose body fat, obviously something's going to have to shift, but that's why I prioritize vegetables, lean protein, foods from nature. They will, they are, that's it. Nature <laughs> is the ticket. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes we're going to intermittent fast or whatever, but do you guilt yourself if you don't intermittent fast? Do you hate yourself? Or are you a failure? Are you a failure if you had some chocolate? Come on now. That's no life to live enjoy. You know, when my clients are like, I had a piece of cake. I'm like, did you enjoy it? Was it amazing? I hope you freaking enjoyed it. (laughs) Or what's the point? Let's see. Ever notice the first syllable of diet? Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Eat real food. And can we stop with the chronic pressure on ourselves? We do this to ourselves. Why can't we see ourselves? Why? Why do we continuously, uh, it's, it's, it's chronic. It's an epidemic of this self belittling. It will never end. If, 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 if you can't give yourself freaking credit and see your own beauty and your own power, it doesn't matter how far you get. You will never be enough ever. Bodybuilders are a great example of that. <laughs> If you think that you're going to earn it, you're on the wrong track. You have to give it to yourself first. See your own beauty. Thank your body for what it does. Thank yourself for how awesome you are. See yourself. Give that to yourself first. And then everything goes up. All right, let's see what you guys got here. Laura, something happened after having kiddos. I finally love and respect my body. Beautiful. Especially having a girl. She has never seen me talk badly. 
freaking awesome. Yeah, man. My kids, we have treats all the time. I'm not gonna lie, I give my kids treats. But we focus on real food first, right? Real food first. I, de- I will never restrict my kids on food, ever. I would prefer not to give them eating, dis- disordered eating patterns, ever. Focus on nourishing, 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 and enjoy your life. <laughs> Andrea, life is about adapting and learning. Yeah, we're all doing that. Isn't that the truth? Becca, thank you. Yeah. Oh, the movie Embrace. All right. To check that out. Let's see what else. I think I missed some of your comments here. And like the whole social media comparing thing. Why would you want to be like somebody else? <laughs> we already have one of them. <laughs> How about you? We would like you. We want you to be nothing like them. We want you to be you. I always I always say this. I'm like, I don't care what you're like. If you're 100% you, I freaking love you. If you're like authentically, openly you, I just, I love you. <laughs> I don't care how weird you are. <laughs> We're all weird. I saw someone talk about this and then asked, what if someone from the 1800s saw bodybuilding comps? Yeah. Right. Yeah. If, I think of us like, if, I don't know, for some reason my mind goes to like being in like Scandinavia or, you know, the little hobbit village on lord of the rings or something and everyone's so happy and and then you look at like bodybuilding and and this like crazy you know um on social media now like on my explore page when i first started like fitness influencing i was like pretty fit now i'm like (laughs) compared to these women are like on so many steroids and so many things that it's like they're a dime a dozen now and i'm like why you know why all right let's see what else you guys got Yes, we are all weird. Weirder the better. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> but weird is good. Who is the friend to follow about comparing and despairing? That would be Kate on shame. Kate on at Kate. K-A-T on shame. She is putting some real good shit out there right now. So please follow her. Yeah. She's starting a podcast on shame. It's called Shame on Shame. That is coming. And she's got some really cool content already. And please support her because she's being vulnerable AF right now. And it is pushing her to her limits. But she's doing it and she's being brave. And I'm so proud of her. Yeah, we get caught up in good versus bad. Yeah, that is such a... I'm... The the bad foods... Bad foods... uh Uh-uh. That mentality has got to go. Because I promise your inner child is going to come out. It's going to want all the bad things. Bad, bad, bad. That's it's terrible. Think about it. Like, okay, a piece of cheesecake, or I'm using that example today, is delicious. How is that bad? How is that bad? Now, do I want to be eating things that give me more nutrition than that usually? Yeah. <laughs> but if I'm going to make the grown-up decision to have a piece of cheesecake, I am going to enjoy every last bit of it. <laughs> or what was the point? <laughs> and I promise you, I'm telling you, If you do not enjoy your food, you will eat more of it because you won't get the satisfaction because you're just simply not giving it to yourself. But if you can be like, oh my gosh, this is so freaking good. You probably eat way less. I'm telling you, I do like, um, I do like a prayer of gratitude. Like when I'm eating, I had a very, um, challenging childhood. I'll put it that way. And we did not always have food. (laughs) Just plain and simple. We didn't always have food. So I know what it's like to just freaking wish you had something to eat and there's not anything. And because of that, I am changed forever. Every single time I eat, I sit down in front of my grass fed regenerative ranch steak and potatoes and whatever I'm eating. And I'm just like, thank you. Oh my gosh. We're so freaking lucky. I'm so lucky. I'm so blessed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I'm going to the grocery store and buy whatever I want for my kids to eat. I'm so grateful for that. Hot fudge Sundays are your faves. <laughs> That's my son Kyle's fave too. Yeah. But it's about inside. And you know, like most of the time, am I eating? I, I'm all, it's the feeling, you know, Nikola Tesla said, if you want to understand the, the secrets of the universe, then look into energy, frequency, and vibration. So what is your energy, your frequency, your vibration based off the choices that you're making? I guess I'm just letting it all out, but there was a, there was a couple doing a photo shoot. They were pro bodybuilders at the photo shoot that I did. I haven't released those pictures yet. I haven't gotten them back yet. I actually like those pictures. I had fun at that photo shoot. I was like, this shit's over. Yay. I'm gonna have fun. Um, but 
there, there were, there was this couple and they just were so sad. <laughs> they were just seemed so dead inside. They just seemed so sad. And I was just like, why, you know? And I was like, Hey, you guys did a really good job. They did. They did a really good job. He's, they were like, uh, eh. they're all down on themselves. They didn't win, you know? <clears throat> what are your current choices bringing to your energy and your frequency and your vibration? That's all that matters. How do you feel? And for me, what matters is that I'm free and that I can have fun. That's it. Come what may of my body. That is how I've always been. I was honestly shocked when my body started looking like really fit. I was like, Oh, <laughs> I didn't know like my body would ever look like that. I didn't really know like what was under the fat. I was having so much fun pushing into my limits, trying to qualify for the Boston marathon, learning how to lift. I'm like, this is freaking cool. Seeing how much my energy went up and the, okay, this is the last thing I'll share and I gotta go. Last thing, you know, what was the moment I decided to become a personal trainer? Because I, I have a bachelor's degree in Spanish. I was going to be a Spanish teacher. I used to be a Spanish teacher. And the moment I decided to be a personal trainer was when I was cleaning my house one day. And I realized that I was skipping steps. I was do doing three steps at a time because I had so much energy. <laughs> and I was like, holy crap. I feel different. This is freaking good. I want, I want other people to feel like this. I want to help other people feel like this. I got to share this, especially the moms out there. They deserve to feel like this. This feels so good. I feel so young and free feel. It wasn't when I took a freaking selfie in the mirror one day and I was like, I look sexy. I want to help other people look sexy. That's so empty. But when you feel free, when you feel happy, when you feel good, oh, that's health. That's it. You found it, found it, you know? So that's what I'm after. That's where I, that's where I've landed. This is about how I feel from the inside. And I know that I deserve to live in a body or I'm going to, you know, do it that my damnedest to make sure as long as freaking possible that I get to be in a body that I enjoy being in. <laughs> so I will make my choices follow suit. And that's it. And come what may, if I'm 160 pounds and I feel freaking awesome, then I'm 160 pounds and I feel freaking awesome. <laughs> and if I'm 135 pounds and I feel freaking awesome, then I'm 135 pounds and I feel freaking awesome. I don't care. <laughs> I just want to feel good and be happy and be free and have good relationships. And that is where I'm at. So I guess my encouragement from this video, this video is to, you know, encourage you to think, how do I feel? You know, is your healthy lifestyle bringing you into this life of misery and deprivation and sadness and not enoughness and never good enough? do the inner work. You know, I have done so many affirmations. I look at myself in the mirror and I'm like, you're beautiful. I love you. <laughs> can you do that? You know, can you adore yourself like you would one of your kids? And just be like, oh, give that to yourself. You know, training for competition broke me too. I can relate so much with your story. And I'm so surprised that so many people subject themselves to that unhealthy craziness. Yeah. They don't know where else to go often, you know. There's this very huge letdown afterwards when you've been so driven and you're getting all these accolades and everybody wants to be like you and then you're normal. Uh-oh. That's what happens when we earn, when we're earning our value. That's a terrible freaking place to be in anything, in our work, in relationships, um, and a lot of that might be rooted at, you know, that, that is rooted in childhood. I promise, <laughs> you know, so we just have to look at those patterns. So, yeah. All right, guys, my kids are texting me. They're like, can you come home now? <laughs> we are going to do a little indoor camping tonight and go have some fun with my kids. All right, guys. Hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Hopefully this was valuable to you somehow. And yeah, I'll see you around. Bye.